This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Habari Ghani, I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Para. Power, Habari Ghani, which is a standard Swahili greeting meaning, how are you? Our topic for this episode is Kwanzaa. What is, what is it and how to celebrate Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa, which means first fruits of the harvest in the African language, Kiswali, has gained tremendous acceptance. Kwanzaa has come to be observed by more than 18 million people worldwide, as reported by the New York Times. Kwanzaa is a unique African-American celebration with focus on the traditional African values of family, community responsibility, commerce, and self-improvement. This afternoon, our Sister Power VIP guests, author attorney Daphne E. Barbie, and Dr. Marcia Howard. Habari Ghani. Habari Ghani. Happy Kwanzaa to you and to everyone. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for you. having us. Absolutely. This is very exciting. This is the first time the Think Tech has had a Kwanzaa celebration here. This so we're going to show them how it's done. Yes, we right. will. <laughs> so first, let's talk about what is Kwanzaa. So Kwanzaa is an African-American holiday, which comes right after Christmas on the 26th. And it was created in 1966 by Dr. Maulani Karunga, who was a Pan-African um, in Los Angeles. And it was just a way for African-Americans to come together and celebrate all of the good things that uh, we have gone through, all of the triumphs and the tribulations and to let the generations behind us know the struggles that we've gone through and how we have overcome, and just celebrate the goodness of who we are as a people. I love so. that. Daphne, explain this. How many days? Tell us, tell us about the principles of Kwanzaa. First of all, I have a happy Kwanzaa card for all of you. All right. And I was given a Kwanzaa gift yesterday. It's African-American angel. Whoop, whoop. So here she is, and here the card is. Yeah. And, um, it's a way of African Americans celebrating self-identity, being proud of who you are, yeah. remembering our history, paying respect and homage to our ancestors, mm -hmm. and to look forward to see how we're going to improve everyone and ourselves in the future. So the seven principles, oh, by the way, today is the third day of Kwanzaa. Yes, yes, it is. It is Ujima, which is collective work, working together, which we're doing we're now. now. This is it. <laughs> yes. And so the first day is Umoja, which is unity. The second is Kuji Kajaliga, which is self-determination. Self mm -hmm. Third, we already talked about Ujima. Fourth is Ujama'a, cooperative economics, working together economically. Um, Nia is the fifth day, which is purpose. Kuumba, creativity, is the sixth day. And the seventh day is Imani, which means faith. And so we're here we're on the third day of Kwanzaa, yes. right? but we have a couple more days to go and all of yes. you may want to join in. Yes. Absolutely. So Kwanzaa is celebrated the day after Christmas, December 26th to January 1st. Yes. yes. And so we're going to explain to our viewers about the Kanari here. Is that the correct? Kanara. Yeah. Kanara. So all this, right. This is the Kanara and it has seven candles and the colors each represent something uh, beautiful. So the black candle obviously represents the African culture, the Africans that came here. Uh, the red candles represent the struggle of the people. And the green candles represents youth and vitality and life and the next generation to come. Mm. So every day we would light a candle, starting with the black candle, and representing one for each of the seven principles. That's true. And then we also have baskets of um, vegetables, corns and fruits, which again, this is Kwanzaa first fruit, because it's um, based upon the harvest in Africa. Yes. When you gather the fruits, getting ready to share with everybody and um, the bounty of land, with the, especially Mother Africa, which yes. gives us so much in terms of health and healthy foods and products. And so we have the African baskets with the fruits for the first fruits. Um, and uh, we also have history books, mm -hmm. both history books and family books. So a lot of the people would sit around the table and um, 
read stories or talk with stories. And I when, when I do Kwanzaa parties, I have little tests. And people who win the test questions about black history, they, they win a prize, they a little a prize. prize. Um, and we all gather together and learn. It's not just eating and having a good time. Right. We learn and we share stories about um, famous African Americans or Africans for that matter. Yes, and um, to further expound on the, the harvest, the corn represents the generation. So the kernels represent the bountiful generations that will come after us and carry on the stories from whence our grandfathers, our grandmothers taught us. Um, and actually, uh, I am African American. Well, we all are. Yes, but me, are. <laughs> um, my parents are from Liberia, West Africa. Really? Yes. And so I grew up African, and I also grew up in Brooklyn, New York, as an American. But strangely enough, it wasn't the typical African American experience. So we grew up eating African food, like fufu and mm. soup and Ooh. cassava yum, yum, leaf yum, yum, yum. and palm butter. Um, but we also grew up eating the food that the slaves carried back to Liberia. Um, so we grew up eating macaroni and cheese Ooh. and sweet potato pie. And so it was a mixture of African and American culture. So this is actually pretty new to me. Um, experiencing this, but it goes along with the African culture because I recently went to Liberia and just saw the beauty and the, what we call ohana here in Hawaii, yes. the family and the respect for the elders and just the storytelling and just being able to keep the culture going. Mm -hmm. So this is a beautiful way of having our African-American uh, ancestors just represented you know, here in America. And speaking of Liberia, weren't there elections yesterday? The elections were yesterday. <laughs> and who won? Uh, the soccer player. Ah, North the way, yeah. Yes. Yeah, he the won. The soccer oh, player. And it was okay. a peaceful demonstration, so we thank God for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Peaceful changeover. Now, um, also speaking of Liberia, during uh, the Civil War, it, there were a lot of proponents to send African Americans back to Africa. And they picked Liberia and created it, meaning the Americans did, but it was really an African country before Americans the American came. got there. Yeah. And so a lot of people who were enslaved or enslaved did go back to Liberia. Some of them didn't like it and came back and to came America, back. and others are there. And I understand in Liberia, there is sort of a, a division between African Americans and the Native Africans. Right. So <laughs> actually, just to tell this quick story, my mother is from the line of the um, Americo Liberians. So we're able to trace our lineage back to Tennessee from the slaves that got on the ship, the ex-slaves that got on a ship and went to Liberia. My father's side is from the native side, from the Vi tribe. Now, the Vi tribe are known to be very, very intelligent people. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but also sometimes very lazy people. No. So the smart people <laughs> usually make the other people work for them. Sure. But um, it's just so beautiful to know the heritage that I have and that what I do is to bring that into the schools with me. Mm -hmm. So as a teacher at Kailua, I often bring African-American culture during Black History Month oh, wow. by bringing my African dance class um, and the drummers and the dancers to come and celebrate African culture. And I purposely, purposefully don't do it in February because some people believe that we're just black in February since it's Black History Month. But I want to demonstrate that, you know, African American history is American history as well. So this needs to be shared as well as all the other good things that are happening. Yeah, well, we have such a rich history. We do, uh, that, and it's I, I really, I'm really enjoying listening to you ladies converse back and forth. Let's talk about the Unity Cup. Yes. So the Unity Cup is used before we light a candle. We give homage to our ancestors, and we pour out a libation. So usually we'll pour something inside. It could be water. It could be wine. It could be whatever you want, and we pour it on the ground. Um, if it's done outside. If it's done inside, you can pour it in a bowl, just to honor. So this is our unity cup right here. Yes. <laughs> it's just to honor our ancestors, to give them respect for what they have gone through. I was um, fortunate to go to travel to Ghana about uh, four or five years ago. Yeah. And every time we went into the slave dungeons, you know, they had yes. the slave dungeons, they call it castles, but we call it dungeons. dungeons. And we went into the sla same slave dungeon that um, President Obama went yes. into. 
And before we go into the dungeons, you have the chiefs of the village. Mm -hmm. We all get into a circle, and they have the same the libation same. cup. Mm -hmm. They put rum, and then they put it in your mouth and spit it out, and then they say ancestor's name. You know what I mean? Okay. To pay homage for all of those who had been enslaved and to all of those who had continued to stay there and who are now kings and, and princes and, and yes. chiefs of the village. It was quite moving. And so every time we went into one of those horrific places, we always did you libation did and did respect. And once we were inside of the dungeon, we again formed another circle. The oldest person spoke something positive, mm. and the youngest person spoke something positive beautiful. about our ancestors, and then we went to ah. tour the dungeon. Yes, yeah. beautiful. And we should carry that on today into the schools. And I understand, uh, Marcia, mm. that you single-handedly um, teach black history programs to your yes. students. Yes, wonderful. Amazingly, um, when I came here, I started doing African dance. It's so ironic that here in Hawaii is where I got in touch with African dancing and drumming, which is an awesome um, privilege. And so what I decided to do is to take that into the schools. Mm -hmm. So in 2004, um, it was on the front page of the Honolulu Advertiser. That was the newspaper then. And in Kalihi Elementary, the principal, Mr. Mann, allowed me to turn the whole school into an African village. Wonderful. So we had pictures, we had drawings. Uh, some of the teachers, they just really got into it. We had a king, we had a queen, we oh, had servants, we had lovely. everything. Oh, my goodness. And it was an amazing time. And the children really responded well to it. Um, and it was raining uh, uh, tremendously, and the place was packed. And really? the students came to love it so much so, and I do it to every school. I've done it in Nanakuli. Oh. I've done it um, at Alawai. I've done it um, at Kali, uh, Kailua Elementary. So much so that we were doing our, our practice because we have dance class every Saturday at UH. So this one student heard the drums and ran into the class and said, I knew it was you. I heard <laughs> the drums and I knew it was you. So it warmed my heart that just the little things that we do to share ourselves sure. and our culture, the students really appreciate it. Oh, really absolutely. Do. We were speaking earlier, uh, Daphne and I are on the um, um, Honolulu African American Film Festival Committee. Yes. And your organization did the uh, dancing for our yes. film festival. Yes. They were showing I Am Not Your Negro. That's right. Yes. Which yes. is an awesome, if you get a chance to see that documentary, James Baldwin is awesome. Um, and yes, so Sewa Fade is the only African Amer African West African dance and drum uh, troupe here in Hawaii. Uh, we'll be walking in the Martin Luther, Luther King, King Day, Day Parade. Mm -hmm. We'll be sure. drumming and dancing. So come out and support us. But we try to go out not just around February, but any chance we get yes. to share um, the African culture and the American culture. We have two what we call master drummers. Uh, Seku Kamara and Musa Bangora. They are from Guinea, West Africa. So we have the privilege of having, I want to say authentic mm -hmm, African sure. drummers mm -hmm. here um, that are sharing their culture with us. And um, like I said earlier, the classes are at UH and it's an open level. So you don't have to be a master dancer. I can't wait till you come. Oh, Karen okay. And Daphne. I'll be there. <laughs> All I'll right. There. Yeah. When is it and where is it and what time? It's uh, Saturdays, every Saturday at UH in the Luna Lilo Freeway Portables, right before you get to the stand share of kiosks. Yes. Um, it's at 1030 to 12. We start off with a warm up, live drumming. And oh. yes. And then um, it's just a great way to work out the whole mind, body, and spirit. It's, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Yeah. It's and wonderful. In Hawaii, there are a lot of things, um, a lot of events people can celebrate which um, pertain to African and African Americans. I know at the um, Honolulu Art, they used to have African Safari Day, and people okay. could come there, they'd get their hair braided, they'd cry on different African clothes, and oh. pictures would be taken of them. African That's storytelling. Beautiful. What was yeah. this? This is a, we've been doing it for a long time, but I think it may have ended last year or the year okay. before, but we used to always go down there and do that. We had dance too, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and we have various speakers coming to the art museum um, and African art, uh, African-American yes. art, and sharing their history and history awesome. about that. 
Yeah. Oh, I wish we would start that up again. I've never. Well, we can. Oh, to do please. It. Yeah, let's do it. I'll again. Take, well, we're taking your name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> knows it. how to reach you. I will Absolutely. do it. I will right. do it. Yes. Keep the tradition going. Kwanzaa is just so much fun. And I'm looking at, let's talk about our outfits. Oh, our yeah. African oh, fashion. This is oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm loving it. It feels so good and it's giving. You know, yes. this is what I love. Colorful. Oh, I love the African fashion. Yeah. With the, all of the beautiful jewelry and the clothes. And this is from Ghana. Okay. And the and I wanted to talk about the cloth here is from oh, Nigeria. This is beautiful. This was a gift from my sister Nedra from Nigeria. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so what do you have on? This is a dress that was made in Liberia. My parents, like I said earlier, are from Liberia and it is very giving. I know some people like to wear clothes to show off their curves and believe me in Africa the women have lots of curves mm -hmm. sure. um, but we wear loose fitting clothing because it's hot um, and mm. just because it's very fashionable and it's very giving and they often use their lapa in Liberia it's called lapa and just to make the connection between um, Africa and here in Polynesia the cloth that they wear is called tapa mm -hmm. yes and in Liberia it's called lapa so there's so many connections between African culture and Polynesian culture. I'll get into that later. But okay. this is a very giving and uh, lovely. a lovely outfit. That I'm really grateful that my mom has very good taste. Oh, yes, she <laughs> does. <laughs> and yours, and, Daphne, is lovely. Well, yeah, I went to Ghana, and um, one of the things is in the hotel that we were at, um, women would be there, and they would say, do you want a dress? And they'd have all their cloths. And they would measure you, and you say, oh, yeah, I'd like a skirt or like a blouse. Mm -hmm. And this was a woman who said, I'd like a, I told her I'd skirt blouse. She measured me, mm -hmm. and the next day she shows up, and I pay her. And then she had a whole bunch of other clothes because she measured me yeah. that would fit me. So <laughs> I was like, oh, two outfits. <laughs> this is yes. one of them. <laughs> Very intelligent and innovative people. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the colors are so vibrant. You feel mm -hmm. alive wearing you these. Do. And all these people down the street, hey, how you doing? And I never speak before, but they're like, oh, how are you? Well, when we come back, we're going to continue what is Kwanzaa and how to continue to celebrate Kwanzaa. Thank you. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? Kelly, I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool, and I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm RB Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. Welcome back, Habari Gane. We're talking, our topic for this episode is Kwanzaa. Yeah. What is it and how to celebrate Kwanzaa? And before we went on break, we were talking about our beautiful uh, outfits yes. from Africa. Yes. And we were talking about, we talked about the, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Yes. We talked about the unity cup and the crops and the fruits. Yes. And, the, and Kwanzaa starts from December 26th and it ends with gift giving on January the 1st. So tell me something that really inspires you to continue the celebration of Kwanzaa. So I enjoy Kwanzaa. I just recently started attending some Kwanzaa celebrations. I have a friend in Waianae, Nicole Wu, and she really uh, enjoys putting on this big elaborate celebration, bringing all of the people, and it's not just for African Americans. Um, there are non-African Americans that are welcome to participate because it is about unity, and it is about family, and it is about self-determination and giving. Um, and purpose and faith. Mm. Um, and that is 
transcultural. So we open it up to all who are interested in coming. But what inspires me is that it's just a way to give back, to remember, mm -hmm. and also to give forward to the next generation that's coming. I don't think a lot of our students, particularly here in Hawaii, we're African American. The percentage is less than one percent, three percent, less, right. less than three percent African Americans. And so, what inspires me to continue teaching about Kwanzaa or Black history is that I think our students, the local students, as well as the students who are coming from um, outer islands and from other countries, because my school um, hosts a lot of military students. Hmm. And so some of these students have never heard of black history or have never encountered Africans or African Americans, some of them. And so I strive to just educate. Um, I've been a special educator for the past 23 years, first five and a half in Brooklyn, New York, before being recruited out here to Hawaii to teach. Um, and I just make sure that I let the students know who I am, not just mm. intellectually, but as a person. Sure. I think as a teacher, we are allowed to bring all of us, all of who we sure. are, into the classroom, our trips, our experiences, our growing up. And it, um, it imparts knowledge and experience to the students. And it can connect us to the students, even if they're not African American. It develops respect for African American culture and African and Africa. I mean, if they don't know anything and they just watch TV, they'd have all kinds of prejudices. Sure. Exactly, because they get most of their information about African Americans from music, from TV, from what they see in the news. And not all of it is pretty or accurate. That's right. So what I like to do is I like to do a Venn diagram and show how Polynesian and African culture are the same. So we were both navigators. The yes. Polynesians and the Africans use the stars to travel. We're both agriculturalists, you know. We got indigenous people usually are. They get their food, their sustenance from Mother Earth. Um, we both, and particularly in Liberia, we're the second most uh, popular country that eats spam. I know. Now, I know if that's no. a Kwanzaa situation. <laughs> no, it's not a Kwanzaa situation. <laughs> but when I'm sharing African culture and Polynesian culture, just to show how we are so We're much really alike. We're really connected, yes. We're more, yes. more in common than the not. And music. Different. Yeah, and the dances that sure. still tell stories through hula and African dances. We have dances for harvest, have dances for mm -hmm. celebrations, for weddings, for funerals. So the cultures are more alike. Yeah. Then they all different. And the only thing that they see first is the skin color. Mm -hmm. But when you get down to it, we have so much in common. Respect for the elders, yes. love of food, love of celebration, um, love of self. So, yeah, that, that's what inspires me to just share what we know with the next generation coming up. That's beautiful. It is beautiful. Thank you. Thank I um, you. also do some Kwanzaa celebrations. I have been doing it. Well, ever since I was very young, we had Kwanzaa celebrations um, in the mainland. And then when I came here, I tried to continue the tradition. And um, so we have uh, uh, dinners with certain friends of ours. And there's also a Kwanzaa display at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. It started oh, about five years ago. And um, they have the Kenora and the first fruits. And they have a little uh, picture book as to what Kwanzaa is. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's good information to know. And we could not... Uh, forget that we have Kwanzaa stamps. Yes, right? yes, what, Kwanzaa stamps, stamps. absolutely. Yes. yes, and then I just heard about the statue that's at UH. Yeah, um, you know, in keeping with the Kwanzaa tradition of knowing our history, let's stick to Oahu and, well, actually, the whole state of yeah. Hawaii. In, um, I always grumbled because there were no statues of African Americans in Hawaii. Well, um, there is a statue mm. of Donis Thompson, who was the... Um, uh, a famous uh, uh, African American Hawaiian that lived here, and she mm. was one of the people that got the women's athletic department started at UH. Okay. She's the one behind um, mm -hmm. Title IX and Patsy Mink and getting Mink, Title yeah. IX passed. She was an athlete in her own right, um, and mm. so they dedicated a statue to her in the Stan Sheriff, the um, Stan Sheriff. arena. So you can go there and take a look at it. It tells you a little bit I about will. her history. It's fabulous. And that's on Oahu, and then go to Maui, mm -hmm. and Maui has a Martin Luther King um, statue outside of City Hall, which okay. was put up about four or five years ago. 
And so That's when I go awesome. there, I bring a lay to dedicate to Martin Luther Aww. King. And um, they have a march too, uh, Martin Luther King Day mm -hmm. in Maui, and they march up to the statue. And that is wonderful. Sing and you know give praise and history. And so yeah, there's places here in um, the state that you that do you can go and celebrate. I know that um, Dolores Gutman has a, yes. an organization that celebrates Kwanzaa at Kakaako Park. However, I don't know if they open the park or not. But if it's oh. open, they <laughs> might have it there. <laughs> but they keep closing it, you know. So there's a lot of things over here that, you know, that are going on. That's good. And people should know that even the U.S. presidents, uh, they come in and celebrate Kwanzaa and let people know that Kwanzaa is happening now. Maybe, you know, not this one, mm. but uh, the one prior. <laughs> President uh, Obama yeah, would get on yes, TV. He would, and Clinton, President yeah. Clinton. So th people like Oprah and Maya Angelou, uh, many yeah. stars celebrate Kwanzaa. And we should let people know, just like non-Mexicans celebrate uh, Cinco de Mayo, mm -hmm. yep. Kwanzaa is for everyone. For everybody. It's for everyone. And in our closing, is there just in 20 seconds or less, less, would you like to say something special to the audience out there about Kwanzaa that we have not covered before? Um, no, it just uh, enjoy Kwanzaa, celebrate it with us. Yes. Um, pay respect to African history, African American history, um, start studying the true African American history and African history written by us as opposed to others. Yeah. Um, and I think you will develop a, a great love um, for our mm. culture and we've gone through a lot, but we're still here, we're still, still positive. Standing. Yes, I would like to say that Kwanzaa can be celebrated as uh, creatively as you want it to be and in along with what Daphne said, there's an African proverb that says, until the lion tells the tale, the story will always glorify the hunter. So true, amen. Oh, I and love so that. We need to tell our own story, mm -hmm. uh, written by us, about us. About us. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. This has been just so wonderful. I Thank appreciate you, you Marcia, Thank you. Howard, and Daphne, Barbie, for coming in and celebrating Kwanzaa with us for the first time here at Think Tech. This is very special. And people, a lotion, oceans of aloha, peace, and love.